Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a story that came out that Joni Hill's ex-girlfriend, Sarah Brady, shared a bunch of text messages that he sent her when they were dating two years previously, when they were breaking up. And it was basically all became this hubbub in the world of mental health because in the text messages, he was like misusing the term boundaries. He was basically making demands and trying to coerce her to comply with what he wanted her to do and calling it his boundaries. And that, you know, she was like an awful person for stepping over his boundaries. And then sadly, I fell into a Reddit hole reading all about this. And I just could not believe how much misinformation there is out there, even though this book, BoundaryBossBook.com, you can go get there right now, it came out two years ago, people have no idea what is coercion, what is abuse, what is effective boundaries, what is control. So in this episode, that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about, boundaries, coercion, and control. And how do you know if someone is using coercive control on you. That is what I'm going to be covering when we get to the content part of this. But before we get there, if you happen to be new to my channel, say hello. I'm so glad that you're here. Introduce yourself. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I roll out something new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday, because I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. All right. I love that we are such an active channel. You guys are so open and honest and sharing, and I super appreciate it. So I love to say thank you and highlight your comments. So thank you for this comment from Adrian Smith under the episode, the video episode, how to manage your reactions without suppressing your emotions. Adrian says, Terry, I want to thank you so much for your videos. You have no idea how your videos have helped me in my personal growth. I've struggled with defensiveness and anger. I'm learning to take a moment to slow down and not be rash. I would typically just fly off the handle without fully understanding or hearing what is making me upset. Well, that is beautiful, Adrian. Thank you so much for sharing. And it really warms my heart because the whole point of this channel is so that you get tools, skills, strategies so that you can up-level the joy in your life and lessen your own suffering. And it sounds like it is working for you. So thank you for taking the time to share. I appreciate you. All right, let's move it on into today's content. Oh, so where do we begin? Well, we begin with let's establish what boundaries are. Boundaries. I describe them as your own personal rules of engagement to let other people know what's okay with you and what's not okay with you, right? That is basically describing that your boundaries are on your side of the street. If we look at the Jonah Hill situation where his girlfriend, he knew when he met her, was a surfer and a model. What the fight was all about is he didn't want her surfing with any male surfers. He didn't want her wearing bathing suits on her Instagram feed, even though that's the thing that attracted him to her. He didn't want her hanging out with particular types of other women if they were unstable, quote unquote. I mean, the list of demands honestly was completely ridiculous. I'll put a link to it in the show notes if you want to see it. But again, he kept saying, so I've let you know these are my boundaries. And if it doesn't work for you and doing those other things makes you happy, then that's okay. We should we should go the other way. Now, some people are saying the thing that depressed the crap out of me listening, you know, watching this and uh, reading on Reddit was how many people were like, Yeah. I mean, he told her very politely and not abusively that then they should split up. I'm like, no, that's not what happened. He met her and she was a surfer and a model. He waits until he gets her emotionally hooked and is like, stop doing those things. And this is a boundary. No, it's not. It's manipulation and control. Anyway, let's flip the tables. What if Sarah said to him, you know, now that we're involved, I respect that you're an actor. You just can't do any movies where you have a love interest. You can be the sidekick, but you can't have a love interest. Okay? Is that cool? Does that work for you? Because that, my friend, is my boundary. People would be calling bullshit on that in like 2.2 seconds. So let's establish, for our purposes of this episode, boundaries. What are they? your own personal rules of engagement to let other people know what's okay with you and what's not okay with you. Made up of your preferences, desires, limits, and deal breakers. And I'm not saying we can't have deal breakers around someone else's behavior. We can. 
But the thing is, what is wrong about this and manipulative about this thing with Jonah Hill is that he knew what she did for a living when they got involved. So he waited until they were emotionally connected enough so that he could coerce her into changing. And he wanted to control her behavior. That's not the same as, let's say you get involved with someone and they're sober. They're completely clean and sober. You've never known them as a drinker. And then they fall off the wagon. And you go, hey, for me, it's a deal breaker. If you don't get sober again, this is really threatening the relationship and I'm probably going to leave. That's not coercion. That, that's the truth. That's meaning this is my limit. But he can't suddenly have a limit about something he seemed perfectly fine with in the beginning. It's just an insecure guy. That's what that's about. Insecure, listen, whatever, whatever his reasons are, I don't even care. I just don't love him trying to use boundaries as a lever to control someone and then pretending they're boundaries because that's not what boundaries are. Boundaries are about us. It's letting other people know what is okay how for them to interact with us. So anyway, that's the boundaries thing. Control is, listen, we see this, not everything is extreme. We see this in relationships all the time. If you're in a relationship with someone who's jealous, they may try to control you. And they may, if you have been untrustworthy, they may have a good reason to be jealous. Who knows? But having boundaries is not the same as controlling, right? And it's certainly not the same as coercive control. So let's, I really want to sort of get into what coercive control is. Now, this is abusive and this is extreme, but it's something that I think because it doesn't necessarily leave physical scars, that it can really go under the radar when it comes to people in relationships where you can talk yourself out of it. Like, am I being too controlling or am I being too reactive? Am I being too sensitive? So think about coercive control. It implies that there's some kind of a threat, right? Any, any pattern in a relationship of someone dominating you, right? It's dominating behavior. It's a pattern of oppression in some way. And it uses the fear of harm, right, to keep you in line. And it's about controlling your behavior, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, what you're doing. That's what coercive control is about. It is emotional abuse, without a doubt. And there, there can be a physical aspect to this as well. But the signs to look for is that suddenly things in your life, like what you wear, who you hang out with, how you spend your money. If all of those things slowly but surely, you start having less and less say. The way that you decorate your home if you're living with someone, uh, the kind of car you drive. If you notice that your partner is asserting themselves more and more and you have less and less say, by the end of someone who is completely coercively controlling you, you have almost no say as to what happens basically in your own life, which is pretty scary. How do they do it? How does this happen? Well, threats is is a big thing. Like threatening you, even if it's just saying like, don't do that or you'll regret it, right? That there's an implied threat. Even if the person isn't saying what they're going to do to you, it's scary. Or threatening to harm or get rid of or let go, let your your pet leave. Like a lot of times abusers will use your love of your animal to try to control you. Like if you do that again or don't listen to me, then I'm going to take the dog to the shelter when you're at work or something like that. Or just basically threatening you that you're going to be sorry that you're doing that. And right there, that's already just off the hook, out of control. And obviously anything physical, hitting, biting, pinching, and anything physical, slapping, clearly that's coercive abuse, but it's, it's complete abuse no matter what. Someone trying to humiliate you emotionally, insulting you, making jokes at your expense, calling you mean names, basically criticizing how you look, making you feel insecure, even if it's sort of in a sly way, like uh, you come down, you guys are going out, you come down and they're like, um, are you going to go out in that outfit? You know, immediately tapping into your insecurity that, oh, I don't look good. I mean, I have to be honest with you. It's, it really makes you look chubby right? Like, again, trying to act like they're doing you a favor when really they're trying to make you feel insecure and they're hurting your feelings. 
And this is also very typical, coercive abuse and regular abuse, people just trying to isolate you from the people in your life. I don't know if you've experienced this, but we all have had friends who get into a relationship, their partner hates everybody, and like you barely ever see that friend anymore. And again, all of this is about control. So if they can isolate you from your family, your friends, people who love you, they have that much more control over you. And it makes it that much harder to leave because there's, there's no one you're talking to. Like they're so strict about making sure you're not talking to friends and family and how they would think that would be a total betrayal if you ever talked about the relationship with other people. So again, keeping you in line and isolating can look innocent, making up excuses why you can't attend social functions with your family, using guilt right? Manipulating you to stay with them rather than going out with your friends or like putting down the things that you're interested in doing to make you not do them, right? To discourage you from doing them. Oh, that's stupid. You're going to go take a dance class. Why? You're not a dancer like that. Again, someone monitoring you throughout the day. I mean, listen, there's extreme cases. And I actually had a client who had this where the whole home surveillance system including the bathroom. And it was supposedly there for safety. Why? Why you got to have that in the bathroom? In your house. And her partner watched it all the time, knew exactly what she was doing. And is like, why are you eating that? Like, it was scary. I eventually helped her get out of that relationship safely, which is a major thing if you're dealing with someone like this. Like, keep your cards close to your chest. Do not reveal anything. If you're in a relationship like this, your safety is the most important thing. I'm going to give you some resources at the end. I've also done an entire episode on how to safely leave an abusive relationship. This is not the time, if this is you, to broadcast your plans. This is the time to keep it quiet. But using tracking technology on your phone, on your car, I know some people think this is normal. I mean, really, even the like, you know, find my friends or whatever it is. And in families or relationships where it's mutual and where there's healthy respect, I think that's probably fine. But usually if there's coercive control going on, it's just the one person wanting to know where the other person is. Um, also checking your internet usage, your browser history, like all, all that monitoring is so invasive and makes you feel so controlled because you are right? Like there's no privacy. Also, I mean, this is obvious one, but financial control. Someone who is restricting how much money you can spend, insisting that you share, even if you have separate accounts, that you share the information with them. Sometimes it can be them running up debt in your name, cards in your name. Sexual coercion is another one where someone just manipulating you, pressuring you, into being sexual when you don't want to be or making you feel not just obligated to engage in sex, right? That's one of them, but threatening consequences if you don't. Even offering something for being sexual, all of that is so much, there's so much manipulation in all of those. So you really have to think about if this is you and if someone is doing any of those things, first of all, those are not boundaries. And again, abusive Folks, people who are master manipulators, a lot of times they will misuse boundaries. They are experts at flipping the script so that somehow you leave an interaction with them feeling bad. You're like, what did I do to cause what just happened right now? And it's like so much of the time you didn't and you have to get out of that brainwashed frame of mind. You have a right to be autonomous in your relationship, in your life. I remember a boyfriend that I broke up with many years ago. It was a really codependent relationship. So it was the one and only really bad one that I ever had. And I remember I went away with my friends. And I don't know, whatever we did, I think we went out to a club, my friends and I, while we were away. And he was like, I don't like it when you do that. You You don't seem to understand. I don't like it when you go out, just like that. And I was like, this, this was the beginning of the end for me. And I just said, you don't seem to understand. We're not the same person and you are not the fucking boss of me. You cannot like it. And I can actually still do it. And I was like, that was the beginning where I just, I'm like, I got another three months. Then I'm going to get a new apartment, started looking. I got out of there. I was like, 
you don't understand. I don't like it. You know what, buddy? I don't give a shit what you like is what ended up happening. The, the fact that the person feels so justified in what they're doing and there's a way of like flipping that script to make you feel bad, like being in a healthy relationship, at least in my estimation, means that you can feel and be free and securely tethered. Like you're allowed to be yourself, to dress the way you want, to do what you want, if there's trust in the relationship. And here's the thing, a lot of control issues in relationships come up when there isn't trust, when there has been betrayal in the relationship. So again, we have to look at every situation is different. I mean, listen, what I was talking about before about coercive control, I mean, that's that's specific. Don't worry, all this info will be in the guide for you, terrycole.com forward slash guide. But I think we have to really be discerning when it comes to looking at boundaries and being clear that when we are setting boundaries, we are setting them for ourselves, right? It's not about, and again, let's go back to the Jonah Hill thing. If Sarah Brady said to Jonah Hill six months into the relationship, listen, these are my boundaries. I understand you're a famous actor. For you to respect my boundaries, you can only do movies where you're not a love interest. And that's my boundaries. And if you're, you know, if you're happy doing movies where you have love interests, then good luck. No hard feelings. You're like, okay. So disingenuous. So not real. And manipulative. Trying to coerce, you know? Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about boundaries coercion, control. Tell me all the things. You know where I hang out. I hope this added value to your life, and I hope you guys have the most amazing week. And as always, take care of you.